Okay, then we uh, start today. Still elliptical equations. Last time we were fighting with the uh, simple Laplace equation, 1D and 2D. So today uh, we expand it a little bit and look at uh, the uh, Poisson equation, which then is, of course, Laplace, but not equal to zero anymore. So we have a problem, 1D Poisson equation. And uh, we take the example from uh, basic fluid mechanics. You have the flow between two parallel plates and its steady state. So the Navier-Stokes will then be reduced to something like this. <coughs> Double derivative equal to and then the negative uh, pressure gradient, which in my example has been non-dimensionalized, so it's just equal to minus one. Very easy. For the uh, geometry, if we have the y-axis uh, here, then I have uh, zero here. And then I go from minus one to one. Make it easy. I want to have a discrete solution to that one. So I discreditize. And then, <coughs> clearly, as you all know, the velocity profile is going to go from zero on the walls, uh, no slip velocity. And then you get this uh, nice parabola, max velocity in the center. So. When I now discrete the size, I choose uh, the number of points, sort of an even number, so I get one in the center. So uh, if we start numbering, I should use a different color for numbers. <coughs> so this is number one, two, three, yada, yada, yada. And then here I now have J maximum and then I add two so I have J max uh, unknown within my uh, computational domain and then J max has to be uh, 3 7 11 uh, 2001 an uneven number that should be uh, my uh, mesh okay make a discrete version of the uh, partial differential equation and uh, with the numbers here uh, using j in the y direction this then equals u and you have j plus one two times the center point plus j minus one divided by delta y square so that is uh, my recipe and uh, we are now going to solve uh, that one sort of uh, we try rather straightforward don't we well <coughs> we can adapt a little bit what we did the last time write it on the form everything equal to zero so you invent a function call him fj uh, equals and how would uh, he now look? Well, you have j plus 1, minus 2 center point, j minus 1, and then minus delta y square. But I call him h square, h being delta y. And uh, if that one is 0 for all my points, then I have the solution. How to find it? Well, <coughs> the iterative scheme, sort of the stencil, the recipe, goes like this. The new velocity equals the old one, minus, and then you use the residual. You use the adder to adjust the value. And how do you adjust it? Well, it's minus f divided by the derivative of this uh, function with respect to the point I have picked out. 
And in this then so, the derivative there is just minus 2, so it's fairly easy. And then also we learned a trick to speed up this iteration scheme, multiply with an omega. That was a very neat trick. If omega is bigger than 1, then you have what's called an SOR, successive over relaxation. Omega equals 1, you have the Gauss uh, seidel. Any questions to uh, the theory before we start programming? Okay. So I have started with uh, my Poisson 1D uh, code. So we are going to start with the number of uh, points. Uh, I need an uneven number, so uh, 31, for instance, should be okay. Then what is my h? h equals my delta y, which equals 2 divided by the number of cells, or actually the number of cells within my computational domain. I have j max plus 2 numbers, or to uh, that, uh, but I need j max plus 1 intervals. So there I should have my correct h. <coughs> we need some uh, positions. We can make that one with a linear space going from uh, minus 1 to 1. And then uh, we need, uh, how many do we need? J maximum. Then I need plus 2. I mean, he is also going to include my uh, boundary values. Here the boundary values, boundary conditions are fairly easy. It's only equal to 0. So when we now create a vector, u equals zeros. And then we have j max plus 2 versus 1. Then actually we also have included the boundary conditions. As long as we don't touch number 1 and number j max plus 2. So uh, if we plot this one, it's going to be rather uh, boring, but uh, never mind. y versus u. And let's see if he runs. <coughs> then we get a straight line. Of course we do. Now, what about uh, the scaling here? <coughs> well, <coughs> the scaling, <coughs> that would be very nice to have the max maximum velocity. What's the maximum velocity? Can you solve that one in your head? Analytically, What's the solution? Well, if you have a single derivative, integrate once, then you will have du dy equals minus y plus c1. And then uh, here we can instantly say that, OK, my derivative is going to be 0 in the center when y equals 0. So I don't want any c1. He is, he is gone. And then you integrate once more. You will have 1 half y square plus, and then we have a c2. Well, what's c going to be? Well, the boundary demands zero velocity on the solid walls when y equals plus or minus 1. Hence, it's going to be 1 half. OK, then from this solution, we can tell instantly the maximum velocity appears in the center, 1 half u max equals one half. So we use that one as a uh, scale for our uh, continuing program. A everybody with me on that one? That's okay. Trivial first problem on the basic exam in fluid mechanics. So uh, we can now use uh, the scale here axis. You should go from minus 1 to 1. Ah, we need square bracket here as well, I think. 
minus 1 to 1 and then uh, from 0 to 0 0.5 in the y direction. Then we have the proper uh, scale for my, uh, for my graph. <coughs> Okay, then we create our iteration loop for equals iter equals one up to uh, I don't know how many hundred. Let's try, <coughs> and then I want to have a monitor. How well is my uh, iteration uh, going on? I'll create a residual just to have an idea if the sum of all these are going to be zero or, or not. So we do it like that. Then the inner loop, start with number two. Don't know it, never number one, here's the boundary. From two all the way up to j, j maximum, plus only one. Then we are within our uh, computational domain. And then <coughs> we write the stencil f j equal to and then we have <coughs> the recipe on the blackboard so that should be j plus one it should be minus two times the center point and it should be plus u j minus one like that and then finally minus h square there we have an f <coughs> which then should be uh, zero if we have uh, the solution. So I add that one into my residuals. Just take the absolute value of fj. Now having the fj, we update our uh, velocity. <coughs> The recipe says minus, but uh, the derivative is minus 2, so it's going to be plus fj divided by 2. Now we have the Gauss-Seidel iteration. I don't have any omega yet, so uh, it's Gauss-Seidel also, because within this fj you use uj plus 1, uj minus 1. So one of these is going to be freshly updated. The other one is from the previous iteration. That's gauss Heidel. If you want to do Jacobi, ah, then you need uh, to create a new name here, use some additional storage. Then this calculation demands only old values uh, from the previous iteration on the, on the right-hand side. And then we plot <coughs> y versus uh, u. And I use the same axis, so it's easier to see. Like that. <coughs> and then we can have some title. Let's say uh, we can print out the iteration number. <coughs> then we need uh, integer to string. <coughs> of iter and then we can print out the total residual that is then numerics to string of all my rests and I use two digit digits that should be enough and then finally draw now is that one correct no objections. Yeah. Sorry, you want to have a plus. Uh, this one. Um, here. Uh, Fj equals mm, no. It should be like this. Where do you want the plus? Ah, uh, this one. Uh, good point, good point. This one has been added up, minus one, and then thrown on the other side. Yeah, he should be positive. Yeah, agreed. Let's try with the, with the wrong one and see what happens. What should happen? 
you switch the pressure gradient. He should run the other way, around. he should go backwards, right? Yeah, maybe, but now I have the scale, so, <laughs> so uh, let's say close all and then just plot the results. Y, U. Yeah, he seems to be going the other way. You have, correct, <laughs> switched to the pressure gradient. Okay, let's remedy that <coughs> with a plus and then try again. <coughs> There we go. But a hundred iterations or iterations is not enough, clearly. So uh, we have to uh, do this one further. How many iterations do we need then? A thousand, that may, that may be too much. Let's try uh, 200. Whoops, not 1200. Whoops, now what happens? Must be one two, two ah, thank you. I deleted something here. There we go. <coughs> Let's see if that one now. No. Okay, <laughs> bigger numbers. Ah. As you see, the Gauss-Heidel iteration is slow. Did I do it again? Yes, I did. Strange. <coughs> so you need many, many iterations to hit uh, a steady state here, the hit the correct uh, results. 300, even not enough. And this is only with 31 unknowns. Trace is numbered to 3,000, 10,000. You can just forget it. It's going to take forever. So he's, he's uh, boringly slow. So let's speed up this one. Omega. Omega. <coughs> so uh, omega should be a number between 1 and 2. The more unknown you have, the closer he should be to 2. So here I uh, suggest you use some uh, trial and error. That's a fairly easy uh, way to find a good omega. Doesn't cost much because finding the optimum omega, yes, it's possible, but uh, takes a long, long time. So now you see we have solved it down to machine accuracy, 15 digits uh, accurate. So now we don't need 300 iterations anymore. We can go down to say 100. Can increase the omega even a little bit further. I think that one was a decent one, 1 1.85. So uh, omega absolutely does the trick. Any questions to uh, that one? <coughs> So now we have a solution, a numerical solution. Is it correct? Mm. Well, we found the uh, maximum velocity, true. So uh, that should be uh, quite a good uh, hint. But uh, now solve that one using uh, the backslash in MATLAB. The bas backslash in MATLAB demands write your problem on a matrix uh, form. So how will this uh, matrix uh, actually look like? Well, <coughs> start by listing all your unknowns. And my unknown, well, the first one, that is number two. Number one was the boundary. And then you three, all the way down to the J max but only plus one. These are my unknowns. Should be multiplied with, and then comes the coefficient matrix, which then we have to design. How does it look? Well, 
he will look something like this. The center points, they will have a coefficient of uh, minus uh, 2. What about uh, the neighbors? They should have a coefficient of 1, and the rest is 0. Not a problem there. But for the first one, you can actually see it here now. If you also write the, the right-hand side of the equation system, <coughs> So uh, what I've done is actually the top equation, the discrete one, but multiplied uh, delta y or h on the other side. So here he should read minus h square. That's the answer for the first equation. But now imagine that we actually had a u number one different from zero. In my problem, I have a no slip boundary condition here, so he is zero. If he were to be different from zero, then he would appear here with a minus sign. So here you will now have minus u number one. So the first uh, line in my coefficient matrix, number one, I mean, he's not present because he is sort of to be familiar. He's known. He's not a part of my, my unknowns. The next one. Well, he's inside the domain, so there you will have on the diagonal, that would be minus 2, hitting him, and then he will have both neighbors present. And here you will only have minus h square on the right-hand side of the equation system. And this will be the case for all of them, all the way down to the j max plus 1. What's happening to him? Well, it would be the same as for the beginning. You have minus 2 for the center, and then you have one neighbor. That should be him here. That's only uj max. But, uh, sorry, yeah, uj max. And then it was the one here, uj max uh, plus 2. Well, he's not part of the coefficient matrix, but if he was different from zero, he will then appear here with a minus sign. So there you have the equation system. In this example, then very easy, since I don't have u1 and uj max plus 2, both of them are zero, that's my boundary condition. So this is my equation system. Solve that one using uh, using uh, the backslash in MATLAB. <coughs> Any questions to that one? That's okay. So we have the program and we have the solution so far. So create this A matrix. You have a nice uh, routine, it's called Diag. So he will put elements along one diagonal. And uh, my diagonals, they are very cute, constants all the way. So we take the center first, that should be once. And I have then J marks only. That is my number of unknown inside my domain. So my coefficient matrix A is going to be J max by J max. <coughs> so that's many, uh, that's how many I want. But I don't want one. I want to have them the value minus two. So that's at least a beginning for my uh, coefficient matrix A. Then we continue, we take that one, and then I add some more diagonals. I want uh, ones, and now j max minus one, comma one, because he's one shorter. If you look at the two bands next to the uh, main diagonal, the one with all the, uh, the ones, so uh, this one should now be put in the position uh, in diagonals, comma, 1. 
that should be one to the left of the main diagonal and then we need one the other way as well so I just copy that one and say minus one there I should have my coefficient matrix let's just try that one just to see how he looks let's take um, five unknowns <coughs> and we can print him out. So he should now look something like this. <coughs> minus two on the diagonal, plus one, and plus one for the neighbors. And it is indeed a five by five matrix. That was the uh, coefficient matrix. Then you're going to need the right hand side it's uh, always called B for some reason. B, well he is also uh, once of J max comma one but then you multiply him with and now he reads minus H square minus H square. That's it. There we have everything we need to solve the equation system. <coughs> so how to solve it? Well, I create now a velocity v that reads a backslash b. Now that's the solution. So uh, use backslash. Don't use uh, inv of a matrix a multiplied with b. You couldn't do that, of course, but here much easier to use backslash. If you use inv you can see here inv of a that is a full matrix S and it takes a lot of space additional space to store it so it's not necessary if you use the backslash also backslash is much much faster really efficient <coughs> now i have uh, the velocity v but uh, i don't have the boundary values remember for this equation system, it's only the internal points that's involved. The boundary values are not present. So I have to construct him. So my solution looks now something like this. The first boundary value is zero, and then comes the entire V vector, and then another zero. There I have my J max plus two values. You just add one at each on each side. That's one easy way to expand uh, a vector. So now that one <coughs> we can uh, plot. I plot it on top of the other one. So we have plot um, y versus u. And then we plot him, uh, what did I use here? Uh, some red pluses. Like that. <coughs> Let's see if he runs. <coughs> yeah, we have the solution. I only have one iteration, so this solution, don't really believe it. But you see the dots, they have a nice parabola. So if we go back, increase the number of unknowns. We had 31 and we had 100 iterations. We should now get the correct solution on top of that one, which is uh, quite neat, actually. So, yes, we agree. Any question to that one? No? Okay. <coughs> now, in uh, class, or well, there is this exercise, you have been given the TDMA, the Thomas algorithm, solve a three diagonal uh, matrix system directly using not the backslash but using this uh, uh, substitution uh, algorithm. So, how can we do that one? Well, <coughs> the algorithm. <coughs> 
should be here somewhere. Let's see. <coughs> Tdma. Here you have the function. <coughs> and he demands uh, four vectors as input, and he will return then the solution according to the commercial. And A, lower diagonal, B is main, and C, upper diagonal, and then D, that's the right hand side, what I call B. So let's uh, try to use uh, this one instead. So let's see, we have our program here <coughs> with our now two solutions, our numerical, we have the backslash solution, now create the TDMA solution. The right hand side I have already, I just called him B, so uh, for the TDMA <coughs> he wanted to have the name D for that one, fair enough. And then we start creating uh, the different diagonals. A <coughs> should be then once. And uh, here in the TDMA, this routine, he can actually use the off diagonal to be the same length as the main diagonal. Here I had to differ. Here I had the main diagonal was J max. The two next to it was j max minus one, both of them. But in today, Ma, he don't really care. So he uh, can survive with uh, a full length also to the, uh, to the neighbors. So A and C should be uh, just uh, once. My B, well, he will be the same as A, but then multiplied with minus two. Something like that. <coughs> then we can find my, the new solution. V equals T D M R of A, B, C, D. Then we have to do the same as we did up here. Oops. That was wrong. We have to insert the solution within uh, the two boundary values, so they will appear also in the solution. And then we plot it like that, and they can be green circles. Let's see if that one works and hold off for cosmetics. Any questions to that one? That's okay. So let's see if it works. And you see they agree very nicely indeed. A fun part here if you go down to the with the number of unknown, say you only have three, then clearly I can go down to omega one. Pure Gauss side like I have very, very few unknowns. And run this one. And we still hit the solution quite perfectly. I can even go all the way down to one single point, one single unknown. And he hits it perfectly. Why? That will be question 1A on the exam. So that's a neat one. <coughs> okay. Okay. No questions? <coughs> then we expand our uh, problem. <coughs> so this was a very simple uh, one-dimensional uh, case.
go to two dimensions. <coughs> two dimensions. Ah, we do it all over again. So in 2D, we will then have uh, what's called a square duct flow. And uh, my equation system, exactly the same, but I now have two dimensions, x and y. But I still use minus 1 as the negative pressure gradient, as the driving force. And then, of course, the stencil now will be the double derivatives. So you have i plus 1j minus 2 times center point ij ui minus 1j over delta x squared and then equal the, the same uh, term in the y direction. Now, <coughs> for simplicity, we use uh, the same uh, spacing in both directions. Let's see, here we have a neat rectangle, something like that. It goes from minus 1 to plus 1 on uh, both uh, directions, plus 1. So I should have a maximum velocity in the center. Now this one is not so easy to solve by hand. Possible, but uh, a little bit more tricky. Solving a uh, second order 2D uh, Poisson equation. <coughs> so <coughs> I sort of use now the same philosophy. But uh, using an uneven number. So I use number 1. Two, three, and now I use a simpler uh, one. I use n plus two at the end because I want them uh, the same in both uh, x and y direction. So I will have n unknown inside my domain, both in x and y direction. So here <coughs> I would now say that uh, delta x equals delta y equals h equals 2 divided by n uh, plus 1. That should be my uh, spacing. What about the uh, recipe now? Well now I will have a function. Everything here just uh, written on the form uh, equal to uh, 0. So you will now have all of these neighbors, ui plus minus 1, j plus minus 1, four of these. Then you will have minus 4 times the center point, uij. And then h square up here, and then on the other side, then we agreed he should be plus h square. Now it's written on the form equal to 0. So this is my uh, function that I want to minimize or get close to zero. And the recipe now, <coughs> uij is fij divided by the derivative with respect to the point you are picking out. And this one is minus four. So that should be my uh, recipe. <coughs> Any questions to that one? No? Let's try it. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> we have the code here for the Poisson. I save that one as Poisson. 2D. Then removing the solutions that we had down here, 
like that. And then we have to rewrite a little bit. This one should be N. Shift Enter, you change all of them. I have now a spacing, which I still can use actually. Uh, same in the X and Y direction, no problem there. The U I have to change a little bit. Now he should be two-dimensional. And then I can't use uh, plot. That's not so easy when you use uh, 2D. So I use surf, not up there. Mm, here, surf. Surf is a good one. <coughs> if you are in doubt, uh, contour or surf, use surf. Surf is fast, contour is slow. With contour, he has to interpolate, finding all the lines. So uh, we use uh, the surf. What about the axis? Well, for uh, well, uh, for uh, the previous problem, we knew the maximum velocity in the center. Here we really don't know it, but we can keep it like that. But I'm going to need two more directions, x, y, and z. Uh, omega is one, okay. So now I'm going to need another uh, four sentence here for i equals two all the way up to n plus one. What will my uh, function now look like? Should be minus four instead of uh, just uh, two. And here I now have uh, j plus and minus one, but I'm missing an i here, let's say. I j, i comma, i comma, and also for him, i comma. Then, of course, we need i minus 1 and i plus 1 as well. There we have it. <laughs> and then finally, update. Like that. Copying the surf sentences down here. Like that, we have the residual, we have everything now, should be correct, I think. Yeah, let's try it. When you have done the programming and you are, well, I'm missing an end here, don't I? Yes. Let's have another end. Like that. When you have uh, sort of messed up your uh, code with an additional loop, so uh, so uh, you can reorganize it, select everything, control I, and then you control A, and then control I, automatically adjust the intent so it will be correct. Let's just try that one and see what happens. <coughs> Yeah, that was rather boring, but let's increase the uh, number of unknowns to 31. Yeah, looked a little bit strange, if you ask me. Sorry? Yeah, you're right. Thank you. So I have... Uh, use something strange here. There we have it. <coughs> now it's Gauss-Seidel iteration, very, very slowly. So 100 iterations, you see he hardly starts to move. So uh, you can, of course, just increase the number of iterations. Yes, you can. But it's going very, very slowly indeed. <coughs> 
So uh, using an omega here, that might be a very, very good idea. But uh, we will continue with that one after the break. Any questions? <coughs> we take a break.